So the maturation examination is an indirect measure of maturation. It's based on indicators of fetal neuromuscular and physical maturation which we will see next. And as we discussed the in utero stress can affect the growth and maturation. Usually they go in opposite directions. For example a condition which affects the baby to be growth restricted accelerates the maturation. So the growth is low but the maturation is faster. And a condition like gestational diabetes which causes the baby to be large may actually slow down the maturation. So we can see that in terms of the lung as well as the neurological system in a gestational diabetic mother. So the different parameters that are affect, uh, assessed in the neuromuscular part is the neonatal muscle tone and the tone is usually active or passive. The active tone is affected by illness, maternal medications, acute perinatal compromise and level of alertness. So we don't rely on active muscle tone as there are so many conditions which affect that. The passive tone is useful for evaluating maturational development as it is not affected by the above. So most of the uh, tests which are used in the Ballard score for example depends on eliciting passive tone in different ways. Uh, the basis for the neuromuscular aspect of the Ballard scoring is the progression of the tone development and the same applies to the physical uh, for parameters as well. There is a progression of the physical features that are measured. So the neuromuscular tone development proceeds in a caudal to cephalad direction. So the lower limb matures more towards the foot first and then near the hip joint and there is a centripetal direction so it's towards the center so from the periphery to the center so the lower extremity passive flexor tone develops slightly ahead of the upper extremity tone and the distal passive flexion precedes the proximal passive flexion so these principles apply as we use the different tests like uh, the popliteal angle the square window and so on so the passive tone can be assessed using extensor stretch or passive flexion so it can be mean the same this evaluates the degree to which the limb can be flexed passively at the joint by the examiner then there is a resistance to passive extension where there is a tendency to maintain the natural flexion so uh, the arm recoil is an example of that and angles of recoil of a previously flexed position so you try to extend and see how long it stays in that position